This is week three of the fall trimester of 2017. Here's my figure painting after Monday. And so the week before this, I talked about how to, how I was correcting the drawing and get things to be more specific. I took a brush and was outlining all the forms. So I got a, a really clear, distinct line that I could be seeing all the forms. That though, kind of took it away from being naturalistic because we don't have big outlines on us in nature. So Monday, I, I spent a lot of time getting those lines to kind of seamlessly, trying to get them to, to, to blend more in the background. Um, I also worked a lot on the head, um, still really struggling with getting the head in. Though this day, Matt gave me a tip that um, really helped me start to lock something in. Um, before, they always tell me to do the, the big shape of the head first and then you will get the features on the big shape of the head. But the problem is in this pose, like I was saying last week, is uh, John's like extremely moving his head around. So it's, I, I'm not that good at doing portraits yet. So kind of these big adjustments of the head, um, I'm struggling with following it. Um, and so me just doing the big outline of the head is one thing. And then it, I was then struggling to get the face to fit on that, making it look like, I guess all the structure was connected and it wasn't like a, a floating face um, that didn't connect or make sense structurally with how I captured the, the big overall structure of the head. And so um, Matt said to focus on these and your forehead. You can simplify the forehead by having, well, maybe not me because I have a widow's peak, but with one line this way and then you can do the lines going this way. Um, but when you are looking at a head, there's these other points that, um, there's this line, like a little tick line that is going this way and that way. And I do see that pretty much in every figure that I've done, I can, I can see that usually on the forehead. And he was saying that instead of like breaking it up with this line and this line, if I focus on these two lines and see how they connect with the points in the back of the, the head, that's how I can see the tip forward and back and tilt and side to side. So I did that with John and that helped me be able to see and catch his, I guess it's easier to see the big movements, but then when he's doing like littler adjustments, that still makes a big difference, but I guess it's harder for, harder for me to catch because I, I get, like I said, I, I feel like I, um, I'm not so comfortable with doing portraits and heads yet. So definitely finding the, the two points like this and how they relate to the, the back two points of the head really helps me to see how the head is moving in space. Tuesday, this is the last day of this pose. We usually do five week long poses, but we're starting off the year doing um, the first two poses are two and a half weeks. So Tuesday was the last day. The weakest part of my painting obviously is still the head. So really focused on nailing that head down. Um, like I said, like finding those points helped, but I still was struggling still with the, the, the face. <laughs> so um, Magda came by and she gave me a really big tip as well to see the direction that the, the face is turning so I could really lock it in one position and then work from there. And so what she was talking about was with the nose and I'm trying to keep things as simple as possible so I can still be moving things around. And so I guess this is a good lighting situation you can see with my nose. Um, so I simplified John's nose into a triangle. So I have this line going here and this line going here. So you see the triangle of the nose and also I guess my glasses will act as because his, um, his eye sockets are covered in shadow. So I had a line going here, here, and here. So I simplified the nose into a basic triangle. The problem was I felt like I kept moving that around because I, I couldn't, 
I guess I, I couldn't really tell the direction of the face by just having the nose in such a in such a simplified triangle as that. So as the the pose shifts, if I just keep it in that triangle that I said, um, I guess I was still struggling really seeing the direction that the, the face on my drawing is in. And so Magda said that one way that would really help that was to, to show the, the bridge of the nose and not be showing that in having like a line here and a line here to show like that cartilage bone or the bridge of the nose, um, but to show that in value. And so um, on John and usually on every person, the bridge of the nose is going to be a light area, a lighter value than the sides of the nose. So um, just taking paint and still having those the triangle of the nose, but having paint with a lighter value here that's showing the bridge of it, that made all the difference in the world to see a better representation of the structure of the nose. And so I could see how the the nose was in relation to those points that I, that I found before, and I was able to really lock in the face then. So I think next time when I'm doing portraits, that's something that I'm really going to pay attention to, I think is first getting the top of the head with these points and then um, still trying to keep everything simplified but showing the bridge of the nose either with line or with value I think it will make a big difference so I can really get a clear representation of the, the direction of the, all the planes of the head. That being said, done with the, the figure painting then. Um, really happy that it's done. I was frustrated most days working on this and yeah just really frustrated with working with um, an ever-changing model so happy with how it turned out um, I am liking the the colors more I feel like I learned a lot with color with blocking in color and value and now like those plants that I was just talking about to get the structure of the head now Wednesday, we have a new model that's coming in for two and a half weeks again. So everyone else is doing a full figure drawing of him. Um, and I get to do a portrait of Kevin. And so by the end of the week, I really like how this, I the portrait turned out for my transfer drawing. So I'll be painting it next week, but I was just working on the transfer drawing this week. So here it is on Wednesday. Thursday, and then Friday. And when I do a portrait of someone, I've done one of Brian in the past. You can see right here this portrait. Um, that was my first portrait painting, so this one's going to be of Kevin's, going to be my second one. And so I have my easel right beside Kevin. So I'm really, really close to the model. Uh, there's a lot of distance when I'm doing a full figure painting, but doing a portrait, I'm literally standing right in front of the model. Going through the Ravenswood program, this is, I'm in my fifth year now, and I feel like as I'm improving and getting better, my mind is kind of less consumed with all the things that you need to be juggling with technique, and that's becoming a little bit more second nature for me and so I guess I can my mind is now um, on different things and I'm kind of especially for this this pose I remember when I did Brian I was just like struggling getting a portrait down for the first time but now with Kevin it's it's feeling a little bit easier and so I'm kind of just I guess more aware of my surroundings and what's actually going on and taking place I'm really aware right now about what an interesting thing this is to work on someone's portrait from life. So our model Kevin has allowed me to study his face really deeply. And this feels taboo. Um, you're not really supposed to look at someone for a long time unless you're talking to them or they're talking to you. Kind of like when you're in an elevator and 
no one's making eye contact with each other and you're kind of just avoiding looking at everyone because it's not socially acceptable to. And so I feel like what I'm doing with doing this portrait is something really special. Getting to look really deeply in someone's face in real close proximity to that person. And so I am looking and studying Kevin's face, but it's also not the same because it's not like Kevin can do the same to me. His eye line is past me to the left. <clears throat> and so, and his eyes are, are close to me, but they're not looking at me. It's to my left. So um, I'm sure when I'm standing in front of him, I'm sure he can see me from out of the corner of my eye. So I'm sure he's very aware that I am right there looking at him and of course he knows he's he's a model for a figure class <clears throat> so he knows everyone's studying the whole of him and drawing him but um, I feel like it's different because when I do full portraits or um, full figure paintings of someone there's a really big distance and also the easel then is in between me the easel and the model but with a portrait the easel is right beside the model so there's nothing in between us and it's just a lot closer than it is with a figure painting kind of like i'm almost in his um bubble as well and furthermore i know kevin too i know him personally and i know he's a brilliant composer he's a really intelligent person he dresses really nicely um and he loves scary movies um <clears throat> but when I'm looking at just his face, all those things like his his hobbies and career and personal taste are completely stripped away. He can't show me any of that in his face. So I feel more like I'm seeing and studying and looking just at the essence of his humanity. And I was trying to think too other ways that I guess people are allowed to do that is to look at someone in that way and I honestly can't think of any anything else because um, taking like looking at a model or something with taking a photograph um, you're looking at the, the photograph so I guess um, that's kind of shielded between you and the the real person um, maybe like looking at someone for dance or if they're performing that way but again they're they're doing something and you're not actually looking just at them solely you're watching them doing their movements or whatever so um i guess with this portrait i'm really aware of what an incredible and special thing this is that i get to do and i just feel really honored that kevin allows me to do this because it is for a long time too because our model sessions are three hours every day so I get to study and stare at, at a living breathing person <laughs> right in front of them for three hours a day which is something that I think is really incredible and I think that's why with certain portraits definitely um, the very best portraits when I look at them they they really grab me and even when I'm not in front of that portrait anymore that image still comes back and haunts me and I think it's because then I get, if the painter's good enough they can really capture that the essence of that person's humanity with everything else being stripped away but it's you're really just looking at the flesh and bone of what makes someone a person so I've been thinking about that a lot <laughs> with my in the model room um, and then on to my afternoon project I'm working on my first still life which has to incorporate garlics. So um, I forgot to take photos throughout the week of the progression of this. So this is the photo from it on Thursday. What I'm doing is I'm working directly on a canvas with just charcoal and white chalk to get the drawing on there. Um, the, when I first started doing the drawing, I wasn't doing it in a way that you see now, which is really atmospheric and you're just looking at light shape and shadow shape really. Before, I was doing things very liner, linearly, linearly, that doesn't sound right, with line and um, d outlining the pod and the garlics and it was really hard to see what I was, I guess, 
doing and representing and I kept moving things around a lot. Magda came by and said I should be be more painterly and atmospheric and to really just focus on light shape and shadow shape, which is what you're seeing here on Thursday. So I changed around what I was doing and I went away from just lines and outlines and just something that you're seeing right now. And that helped a bunch because it, it actually looks like what I, the actual still life looks like. So it's easier to see and to move around. And one thing that I'm liking a lot about this is I've tried drawing on canvas before with charcoal and white chalk and it seems like um, I didn't I felt like I didn't have a lot of control over that medium and being precise so I feel like things just would easily get away from me and it would look pretty messy I think what I have now is pretty controlled and I feel like I can control it and get this um, this nice image on the canvas like that so um, definitely feel like I'm improving with that because I would ideally like to get away from doing transfer drawings on paper and just working then directly on canvas because doing transfer drawings on paper and then transferring it for the canvas it's never a perfect transfer so um it just makes more sense to take out one step and just to draw directly on the canvas and so then on friday what i did was i did my first wash i did this all with one color i mixed up a shadow color um, out of uh, black, red, and yellow, which pretty much looks like a like a raw umber, and just applied that everywhere. Started off with a tiny bit of turpentine on my brush, wiping it off, so it's just a really tiny bit on on the bristles and mix that in the paint. Put that on um, while I'm working. That first layer's drying because it has the turpentine in it. And then I wouldn't, um, after the first initial dipping my brush in, I wouldn't do that again. And so I was able to build up more paint on top of it to get the image that you see here. Um, looking at it, I see that some things are skewed. The pot is kind of wonky <laughs> right now. Um, so I'm pretty happy with the drawing and how it's, it's coming along. Um, like the atmospheric effect that I got on it, but there is definitely some structural things that I can be working on as I am developing this painting further.